Hey guys, welcome to the Pinker Tsunami channel. My name is Alex. We're going to be solving some fog lights for an 04 Civic. So it definitely pertains to the 7th gen Civic, so between 01 to 05. So you shouldn't have any problems. A lot of things aren't covered, as in like they're not named at all whatsoever. So we're going to name them so you know what we're talking about during the installation. Uh, this is going to be Harness A. Harness A is going to be one connecting to the fog lights and has a ground. Uh, Harness B is going to have a pretty long grommet. Uh, it's going to have two brown connectors. It connects to Harness A and C. And that's going to be inside the fender wheel well. And then uh, Harness B connects to C. And C is going to be the harness that's going to have the relay. It's going to have this long cord that connects to the steering column. That's all the harnesses. You also need cushion tape. Cushion tape is basically just like, it's like a foam tape that it's an anti-rattle inside your like fender. So whenever you install them, it doesn't rattle back and forth when you're driving especially when you have bad bushings like I do. <laughs> and you also need a, a lot of zip ties, so make sure you have some zip ties. And that's basically it. I'm gonna cover the hand tools in a bit, so let's get to it. All right guys, these are the tools you need for the fog light install. You're gonna need varying sizes of the Phillips head screwdriver, a small one and a large one. You're gonna need a flat head to actually pick out the clips from the bumper and the grill. You're also gonna need a knife to carve out the fog light housing inlets. You need an eight millimeter, you only use this once, and you also need a 10 for everything else. You're also gonna need a thumbtack to actually make a pilot hole for the fog light housing. I use a 3 8 you can use a half, you can use a quarter, and you're gonna need a plastic pry tool to actually take out the bezels in your dash. Definitely useful. And that's all you need for your fog light install. All right, to start this project, you need to start by taking off the front bumper by removing these four clips here. To remove these clips, all you need to do is get your flathead screwdriver and slide it in between the guides and twist up. Next, you want to grab your 8mm, and it's going to be the only time you're ever going to use it, and there's one on each side. Then you want to go to the bottom of your bumper, and there'll be a total of six clips, the exact same ones on top of the grill, you need to remove. After you remove those clips, there are going to be a total of two cell tapping screws, which you use your Phillips head screwdriver to remove. After that, your bumper is free, and to remove it, you just need to pull out. The same exact design is also on the bottom of the headlight, so grab the middle and pull towards yourself. In order to remove this, you need to remove these two tabs. This one right here, and then one below. After that, the rest is soft plastic and should pop out immediately. Once you remove the inlet, there are going to be a total of eight bumps on the right side. This is where you get your thumbtack and make a pilot hole. If you have an aftermarket bump, you're not going to have these, so please pause the video for reference. I didn't have a drill bit lying around, so I used a household screw to make the pilot hole bigger. How to find out how you lined it up properly is when you toss in the 10 millimeter bolt through the slot here. Removing the headlights is completely optional, but it makes everything easier. All you need to do is get your right fog light housing connector and toss it behind the windshield wiper fluid tank. Once you've done that, fish it around the front of the car. But make sure you put it under this ground and not over. There's already an existing harness under there, so just basically zip tie to this. Next, we're going to start on the actual ground itself, which is on the passenger side of the front end of the car. The 10 millimeter bolt. There's already a pre-made slot there, so basically just dump everything around, just untighten it, toss it in, make sure you hold it down. Ground one's pretty easy to take it out, just get a flathead screwdriver, pry it out. Um, this is pretty detrimental. Put this part on the inside, and this on the outside and just slide that connector in. To get to the rest of harness B, you need to remove this cowl at the bottom of the passenger side footwell. 
To remove this cowl, all you need to do is press down, and there's a total of three clips holding it in. Just be careful because it's behind the center console as well, so just kind of bend it into place until it pops off. Then pull it towards yourself. Next, you need to tug off this kick panel here, which basically just pops right out. Harness B is going to be tucked in the top right corner. Just a side note, you do not need to remove the fender. Just remove the fender trim, which is that black piece on the bottom of the screen. Next, you want to pop this clip right into there. And don't worry about the left side, because it's pretty stiff. Now next, you just finish up by plugging it into B to A. Next, you want to grab your cushion tape. And then you want to place it right here. Now you want to remove your glove box. It's pretty easy. Just push in on both sides. And then grab harness B and slide it up. To end up removing your center console, you're going to remove these three screws and then the very bottom one on each side and remove these two bezels this one's easily taken off by hand as the other one needs a plastic pry tool they got two screws here and two screws here which I like to place inside the cup holders uh, then you're going to have four clips, two on each side. After that, you just pull towards yourself. Just be mindful of the yank it because there's still another connection you need to remove. Once that's removed, you can take off this cap right here. If not, I'll be flying around your car after you remove it. So I'm always at a tough time with this one right here because to remove these, it's like because they're like this inside. To remove these, all you need to do is don't pinch it, but you need to pull it out right up. And it unlocks right there. And you push it down. That's how you open it. So that's how you not break these clips because they're really expensive. Too expensive. So, like I said, one more time, pull this out. So it's kind of hard to get in there, but it is possible to do it. So don't break these, they're like five bucks a pop and they will give you the wrong color for some reason. Now you want to pull towards the middle to remove these two clips. And for that, it's out. After the center console is out, it's a lot easier to get to your radio. You're going to need your Phillips head screwdriver to remove these two screws on the bottom. And then once you get these two off, you basically go from the bottom and you push out to get enough room to get your hands behind this and then pry out your stereo. To get started with your steering column removal, you need to remove this panel here. All you need to do is just twist and then pull towards yourself. Next, same concept except you push down to remove the clip. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Removing the steering column, please be mindful or this might happen to you. To remove this, there's three Phillips head screws. To properly remove this, you basically push in the sides to remove these clips. Here, you need to remove two Phillips head screws, which are the very top. Just don't do what I'm doing here because there are two clips on the very bottom as shown here. Just to give a heads up, what I did was snake this around. 
snake this part around. I just went from the inside here, <coughs> and it's actually connected to this connector here. It's on the same like kind of strand. Through the inside part here, I went around completely. Make sure you have it in the inside here. And I snaked it behind this panel right here. And then to around this area. And now I need to disconnect this guy right here. Make sure you have everything over the main harness going to the steering wheel. Not under, but over. It's gonna get in the way of like all the shrouding. So to get this off, there's a little like back plate right here. Uh, it's kind of odd to see it right there. What you do is like I just put a pair of tweezers in it and I pry it up because there's a little tiny like point where it, it clicks into right there, which is right here on this thing. So you just you want to just push it up and then push forward and it'll take it out. Believe me, you'll get it. And if you want anything for reference, use the one you're putting in because you can see how it looks like right there. So you literally just put it through here and then push up and then slide out. Uh, it's tough, but you can get it. It'll take a while. Now you wanna go back to the top of your steering column and remove this connector right here. I use the plastic pry tool to remove this clip on top of the connector, which allows you to slide this pin into. To find out which one, just look at this diagram right here, second to the last one on the very top. And then slide the connection back on top. If you break it, it's fine. It'll go back in no problem. All right, so this next thing is only for the automatic transmission guys. You manual transmission guys, you don't need to do this at all. But this connection is the only one you need to plug in for, for manual transmission. Automatic guys only have this connector here. Also, if you're having a tough time taking it out, get a flathead screwdriver like I am right now, the very tip top, and just pry out. If you painstakingly take it out. <laughs> It can go into this switch right here, it just it goes right into it. And then you can replace the same exact spot with this guy right here. Exactly the same switch that you just took out. So, just doing a switch. All right, next is this guy right here. And it literally goes right there. You just literally just plug and play. Okay, after you get that plugged in, and then you get that top one plugged in, and you also connected that one, the old one that was already originally in there, with the one in the harness. You're set, dude. That and plugging that correctly. Now you just need to zip tie everything back together. And uh, if you have a brand new uh, harness, just make sure you have a uh, 10 um, fuse. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I can't believe that bulb is out, that's so funny.